Trying to do comedy, and I tell them it's because I like making people laugh. But honestly, self-deprecation and humiliation are both just kinks of life. <laughs> I know a bit too much about kinks because I used to be a Twitter dominatrix. And for those of you that don't know what that is, it's like a normal dominatrix, but on Twitter. So I wouldn't even have to do my makeup to men feel like I wouldn't even have to do my makeup to make men feel like shit. I would start to sit there on the sofa, here on top of my head, looking like an absolute gremlin, sit posting old pictures of myself, saying, "You could never get a girl like me." My boyfriend sat next to me like, you wouldn't fucking want one then. <laughs> um, I often think that I should do like a reunion gig for all of my favourite pay pigs, um, just as a thank you for their service, I guess. But um, it'd be a really fucking weird crowd though, wouldn't it? Wouldn't want to clean up after that gig. <laughs> um, I do still invite my favourite pay pig slash slave to all of my gigs, but my boyfriend has asked me to stop calling him that. <laughs> Does anyone here ever look at their partner and think, oh my god, I've lucked out so much? It's so handsome, so intelligent, no, me neither. And I can say, I can say this purely because I know he hates me. Like, um, after three years, I fucking hate me. But, like, my boyfriend, there's some reasons why I think he hates me. So, in the night, he'll ask me um, what time I'm waking up the next morning, and I thought it was so our routines could coincide nicely, but it's just making time his morning shit for the exact moment I need that bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> she knows. <laughs> um, but another reason that I think he hates me is that like, he snores but only when I'm in the bed. So if I go upstairs and he's in the bed by himself, it's completely silent, looks like a corpse, it's fucking beautiful. Um, but as soon as I get into the bed, he starts his best impression of like an angry elephant seal on a dance man. Um, you can picture that. Um, another reason that I think he hates me is that um, he, yeah, he breaks all of my shit. So all of his stuff, he never breaks because it's all built for men, it's robust. But all of my stuff, he just picks it up, snaps it, gone. And he says it's by accident, but I know it's because he knows, like, I ate his ice cream last week. That man would break a sweat if he wasn't so fucking lazy. <laughs> just before you all feel sad for him, that's not my boyfriend. He didn't come, that's why I sag him off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I guess, like, him breaking stuff and, you know, being just a man is what I get for switching teams. See, I am a recovering rug addict. <laughs> A has been, if you will. And if you're still not getting it, keep these nails short, out of habit. <laughs> um, there's a few differences between my ex exes and my latest ex experiment. Um, like, my exes didn't snore straight off the bat, um, so my exes snored when they got comfortable, and by comfortable I obviously mean fat. <laughs> because we all know that getting fat is an issue in a relationship, but my ex-girlfriends, I could never play fight with them because I always took it too far, where my boyfriend has straight up punched me in the face. And before you feel sorry for me, you know, I, I believe in equality, that's why we do that. But we were playing a game where I was dodging jabs. Um, we, we do have a PlayStation, but we just have no fucking self-control. Um, so the game was that I would dodge the jabs and he would punch, and everything on my body went, fucking hate him. I don't know what came over me, so I went to swing my entire body into it, and I felt my brain go to the back of my head. He punched me in my chin, so I was like, let's fucking go. So he's holding on to me, and he's like, I'm so sorry, I love you so much, I, I really didn't mean it, and I'm like, oh bless him, he really means it. Um, turns out he was just fucking terrified of restraining me. <laughs> Ooh, I don't like those jokes then. <laughs> Um, so yeah, the uh, yeah, going back to the weight thing, obviously, you know, getting comfortable is an issue in a relationship. I was a size six when I got with my boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> so you find that funny then. 
<laughs> but like I used to go to the gym all the time. I to, you know, now I find myself in the sort of mirror like, babe, am I developing a double chin? At least you can take more punches now. <laughs> um, but like, you know, I, like, I am still a fitness enthusiast. I don't go to the gym. I'm just super excited for people who do. <laughs> my current weight category. Can't hold my breath for long enough whilst I walk uphill to relight my fag. <laughs> um, I don't, like, I, you know, I want to lose some weight. I don't want to go crazy. I just want to unexpectedly see myself on the candid creep section of Pornhub. <laughs> He knows. <laughs> um, but like, yeah, so you know, in my, in my quest to lose some weight, I bought a pedometer, I went to Download Festival, because I was a fucking emo. Um, but I went to Download Festival and I did 40,000 steps in three days, which I'd love to say was from being in the mosh pits and enjoying myself. But it was just from trying to find a toilet that didn't resemble the end guy's mouth and the human centipede. <laughs> if you don't know what that is, big saw meets hungry caterpillar. <laughs> I went to therapy for the first time a few weeks ago, and I know you're probably thinking, Jordan, you seem so well put together, really sane, why do you need therapy? But like a few weeks ago, I couldn't be asked waking up, eating breakfast, or you know, brushing my teeth, so I just ate an arrow in bed. <laughs> my therapist says I'm depressed, I say I'm resourceful. <laughs> so I turn up to therapy, already shitting myself anyway, and I'm greeted by this iPad, no fucking humans anywhere, so I'm like, is this the Matrix? Um, but like, yeah, so I'm greeted by an iPad, it tells me to smile, log in, and I'm greeted by this picture. If you can't see it, I'll show it to you around later, but the angle is basically here. <laughs> so, like, I'm looking at this thing and I'm like, what the fuck do you do? Like, I'm five foot two, what do you do if you're over six foot, six foot? Fucking nostril identification. <laughs> but like, if I didn't need therapy then, I fucking do now. Confidence has gone out the window. I've now got like, my skin is like a braille type eulogy to my confidence that once was. <laughs> I have to wear so much pseudocreme, like, I have to wear so much cream on my skin that I've started to think that pseudocreme is a seasoning. And that shit is spicy. <laughs> um, like, I get quite paranoid as well, so uh, we all know that phones are listening, so um, if you mention bracelets, a Pandora ad will come up. So I've started whispering things like, pre-organised threesomes, being skinny without being sad. Sugar daddies about sex or weird kinks. Come on, sucker boob, just work with me, daddy. But like, you know, I'm quite an obsessive, like I'm an obsessive person, I like hoarding things, I love collecting things. And on an unrelated story, I've been banned from the SDI clinic. <laughs> Apparently that's considered cheating. <laughs> But like, have you, you know, I do trip quite often, just in real life, so have you ever been on Facebook and you look and you're like, like you know, all the stories become one, colours become a feeling, like your ex's faces are coming out of the wall, and like, you know, <laughs> words mean nothing, and then you realise you're not on Facebook, you're on acid. <laughs> I've been Jordan Hayes, thank you.